happy to have the head coach of BYU Women's Soccer, Jennifer Rockwood, joining us here in Studio B. Coach, it's good to see you. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. It's, uh, it is our pleasure. And uh, oh, ho-hum, another year you lose two, you know, two of your top scores. Spring's underway and you're 7-0-1. Oh, uh, I was telling you in the break, there are certain teams on campus I just expect to, to win every game regardless of the situation. Soccer's one of them. And here we go again. Good start to spring. Yeah, we, we you know obviously had such a fantastic fall and graduated some amazing seniors. But you know we returned a lot of good, experienced players. Uh, returned seven starters, and what was unique about the spring season is we had seven freshmen graduate early. Just they were so excited to get on campus and start training with us. So, um, you know they've got in eight games already as uh, new freshmen that should still be seniors in high school. So uh, that adds a lot to our development and getting ready for next fall. You're coming off a national championship match last mm -hmm. year, a, a fun season and just a lot of success. Losing two key players, obviously, but what, what's the expectation for next year's season in this team? You know, uh, every year you kind of reevaluate, but uh, we're just ready to go. I mean, we expect to win a conference championship. We expect to be back in the NCAA tournament, and I don't think there's any reason why we can't anticipate and expect to, to go as far as we did. Um, like I mentioned, we have a lot of good returning, experienced players, some great leaders on our team. Um, you know, we graduated our two captains, but now we have Natalie Wells and Jamie Shepard, who, who are kind of leading the crew, but so, so much great experience. Um, we're shifting people around in some different positions. Um, and they've already had a chance to play uh, in, in those positions this spring. And I'm just really, really looking forward to it. It's a good vibe, a lot of fun. Love our new freshmen, fun personalities, tremendous soccer players. And they've just been able to fit right in. Who are some of the, the new players? Because as you mentioned, you know, there are a lot of players that were young but got experience as starters. And I mm -hmm. honestly, I think that's one of the things that, that I admire most about what you do because it doesn't always happen this way. Even with teams that you've had a lot of veteran players on, you've mm -hmm. always found opportunities for the young players to not just get minutes but some meaningful minutes, and it's always paid off. Mm -hmm. So who are some of those players but also some of the new faces that, that fans that follow the, the soccer team should be paying attention to? Yeah, you know what we, as I mentioned, Natalie Wells, um, you know, she came off the bench for us, but we anticipate her to be taking in Grace Johnson's slot as a center back. She's our captain now, and having her in lava on the back line, we return the rest of our back line. Um, you know, we'll have someone like a, uh, a Rachel a McCarthy who, you know, came off the bench for us the last two years and has scored a a lot of goals. Um, we see her in the starting lineup up top, you know, trying to replace some of those goals that Cameron Tucker scored for us. And, you know, moving Jamie Shepard from our six to our 10, kind of taking over the role of Kayla Coulihan. And so she's been able to get some good experience. It's a very different position um, with lots of different responsibilities, but as one of our, our top returning players, I think she'll fit right in and, and do a great job there. So. And we talk a lot with basketball and football about the jump to the Big 12. One more season to go, and then we're there, and it's coming quick. Mm -hmm. So with soccer, as you look at the key factors to help you make that jump, what are some of the things that stand out for you in this team? Yeah, well, we're fortunate to play in the WCC, which is a, a very good uh, conference for women's soccer with Santa Clara winning the national championship the, f the year before last. And three of us, us, Santa Clara and Pepperdine, finishing the top 15 this year. And as we you know, played Santa Clara in the semifinals. So um, our conference continues to get better, uh, probably top to bottom, the most competitive our conference has been. So we'll have one more year to really prepare us for that. We've got a great non-conference schedule. We always play a very nationally competitive uh, um, non-conference schedule so you know we anticipate being able to be ready for for the Big 12 in, in 2013 and you know same expectations will follow us when we go into the new conference when do you expect to have the schedule finalized and and done to and you know released when do you expect that to be um, you know, that's something they're sorting out, I think, with all of the teams mm -hmm. right now. We've seen some um, kind of samples of, of how it'll work, not who will play. It doesn't seem like we'll play everybody uh, in the conference. In soccer, you usually just play, you know, home, right. home not home and away. Um, you know, so we'll wait and see. But uh, we're just really excited for that to, to kind of play some new teams. We've played a lot of those teams in the conference right. in the past. And TCU has done the best in women's soccer the, in most recently. And, you know, they're, they're old conference uh, opponents of ours from back in the Mountain West days. All right, your final two matches of spring season. This weekend, you've got UVU and SUU. What do you want to see out of your team as you wrap up spring? 
Yeah, just a constant building and, and development. I, th I think we've gotten better uh, with each of our weekends. We're allowed to play five days, and we've played two games, which is tough to do. But again, with the addition of new freshmen and a bigger roster, it's been great for us. Um, but uh, just just do a little bit better than what we've done this last week. We've played tough games. We've played, I think, four Pac-12 teams this spring and have had great results there. And, you know, U uh, UVU is always a tough game for us. A lot of local girls, a rivalry that certainly goes on. Uh, we didn't get to play them this fall, so I, I think it'll be a great game. And people can come out and watch us on Saturday and see some new faces. You, uh, you are BYU women's soccer. You're an institution here on <laughs> campus, and the success obviously speaks for itself. I'm curious as you go into your 27th season, what still drives you? Um, I think just naturally I'm a very competitive person. I like to win, um, like to figure out ways to win, like to certainly help our, our players find uh, – ways to be their very best and, and trying to just get the most out of your team. And and I, I just love the challenge of uh, every season, every fall season. You know, you, you have a new group, a new group of freshmen to develop and, and welcome in. And, um, you know, as I mentioned, I'm fortunate to have some amazing young women uh, on our team. I have... Uh, an unbelievable staff, uh, a lot of fun to be around. And so just enjoy my time with the team. And, and uh, you know, you work hard and you play hard. You expect to win and good things happen. We talked to football with Kalani Sataki about uh, the alumni game last week and how that was a big success. But I want to talk to you about your alumni and watching what they've been able to do. Players like Ashley Hatch and Michaela Coulihan and Cam Tucker. So you follow them throughout their careers at BYU and you see the success. You were able to celebrate in that. And then for them to go on and do so well playing professionally. And those are just a few players that have done it. But yeah. what does that mean for the program? Um, it's just so fun to, to see uh, them go to that next level. Um, and certainly it, it helps our program in the sense that it kind of sets a standard that if players come in and, and have that dream and have that desire to play at the next level, then it's certainly an option for them. The exposure that they get, uh, we've proven to develop our players that are, are ready to go to the next level. Um, and so I think that does a lot for our younger players. We've also had players that are ready to play at that level and just decided not to, sure. and good for them too. But, um, you know, they're great examples for our players. It's fun. Ashley's in a, at another national camp right now getting ready for the U.S. women to play. Um, and Cam and Kayla are, are having their first experience of professional athletes. And Kayla's uh, played a lot of minutes in the games uh, so far with Orlando. And, and so, yeah, I think it just uh, opens those doors for, for future players to do that if that's something they want to do. Uh, we were asking Kalani about off-season plans now that their spring is done. Once mm -hmm. the spring season is done, what – what, what do you ask of your players as you go into the offseason, and what are you wanting to see from them before you regroup in the summer and get ready then for the season in August? Yeah, we'd like them to take a little break. We've had a, a demanding year, um, and so we want to take a little break, and they'll start up their summer workout programs in May. Um, we do a lot of summer camps, a lot of summer soccer camps, so it's a great opportunity for them to be here on campus, so working camps. Um, and uh, training together. So most of all the girls will be back in town, usually June and July. And so they're together working out and, and training. Obviously, we can't do a lot with them. Um, but because they work camps, you know, I get to be around them. And that's a lot of fun uh, to be with them all summer. And then we'll get ready to start. We're usually the first team that gets going that first week of August. And uh, we get to open with North Carolina at Chapel Hill. So something to really look forward to. Absolutely. Well, OK, we've asked the question here today. And we're asking, you know, those watching Disneyland or or the Masters? What would you pick? I'd have to say the Masters. I've, I've never okay. been, okay. Um, and I think that'd be fantastic. I've been to Disney World uh, several times, so I I'm going to go with the Masters. The new. Okay. Going somewhere yeah. new. Yeah. Right, and you you have something there. Yeah, so I just like to, every time I come up here, I see this great picture <laughs> oh of, my gosh. Classic. Of, of Greg Rebell, <laughs> I think as a teenager. What, what and was I just, he there, 13? I just we wanted think to show 13. this so that he can, you know, say hi. Uh, Greg and I are good buddies. He travels with us. So, yeah, fun oh, memories. He's, he's, yeah. He may be up in his office right now cringing. <laughs> You'll be loving yeah. that, right? Yeah, he will. Love it. Coach, it's always great to see you. Thank Can't you wait coach. for the season to be here. Thanks for stopping by. All right, thanks, guys.